Okay, this really crosses the line. Morning when I was doing the chores, I found real hard evidence that someone might be spying on us. Okay, so this morning I was out doing the chores on our little Appalachian mountain homestead. By the way, we're Art and Bree. Um, we tell family and small scale agriculture stories, sharing our journey on this 100 year old farm. Subscribe if you want to join us for the journey. We have over a thousand videos, uh, so check those out. I was out this morning, um, out here feeding the cows, like I do every morning, throwing them hay out in the pasture. Alice, mama milk cow, Jersey, her heifer, future milk cow, Jersey Dexter Cross, and the boys, Moon Pie the steer, he's about to go in the freezer, and Texas bull calf, he'll become a steer and eventually end up in the freezer. Between them, that's like, the next two years beef um, for our family. I think there's a little bit of, not paranoia, but just concern with a, when you have a family vlog, you don't want people showing up at your house. Now, 99% of our viewers are great, respectful people who I would love to run into. And honestly, when I meet YouTube fans, um, people who watch our channel, viewers on the street, I love it. And they think, oh, I'm invading your privacy. And I'm like, no, let's talk. Like, I love meeting people. Let's put that paranoia aside though, because what I found this morning isn't paranoia. The best explanation I can come up with is that someone's basically surveilling our property. And I found hard evidence of it. I'm about to show you. And this honestly has nothing to do with us being on YouTube. The last thing I suspect is someone who watches our channel is spying on us. So this is hard evidence right in front of us. And I think it's probably someone who lives close by, maybe a neighbor. And it just, it just feels a little weird. Without further ado, let's look at the evidence. It's right here. Do you see it? Does anyone know what that is? I knew what it was the moment I saw it. Immediately, the whole picture just boop, popped into my head like, oh, it didn't take but a second. And I said, someone, let's look at it. All right, here it is. This is the blade from a DJI drone. It's one of the most popular brands of drones, kind of, good quality consumer drones. They might make some professional level drones, but the majority of their drones that are sold are what I would call good quality consumer drones. They run from, I think about $600 up to $2,000 for their consumer line. And this is a blade from a quad drone and it's in our pasture. Okay, so are you thinking what I'm thinking? That's what my three-year-old always says. What does this mean? And what was the scenario that popped through my head as soon as I saw this? Okay, I found the, the drone blade about 30 feet from the tree line. Here's the scenario in my head, okay? Someone's flying a drone over our property. They nick the trees in the tree line. Pop the blade off the drone. In order to nick the trees, they're flying about no more than 30 feet above our property. Nick the tree line, the drone blade flips off, flies out about 30 feet, lands in the pasture. What happens to a drone when it loses a blade? Okay, well, theoretically, drones can actually fly with three rotors, the majority consumer drones, the majority of drones, and any drone you can buy at a store, all the DJI drones, they'll come down when they have only three rotors on. So they normally have four, one pops off in the tree, the drone comes down. What does that mean? Think about it, okay? You're flying your drone, you know exactly where it is. You can see it on a little map, and you're flying in over our farm, over our house, 
Not sure why. Nick a tree. Your rotor flies off. The drone goes down. You spent a thousand dollars on this thing, at least. What do you do? You get in your car, or you walk. You drive out, you park. So what that means is someone walked up right here on our property, got their drone, and left with it. I don't know. How do you feel about that? So this discovery took me down a little rabbit hole looking at lo the laws on drones, okay? Have you seen those news stories where guys shoot down drones? There's been one in Florida, I think one in Minnesota. Um, I'll tell you what I think when I've heard those stories. I always think that's exactly what I would wanna do if I saw a drone flying right over my house. I'd wanna pull out a shotgun. It would be an ideal weapon and uh, just shoot it out of the sky. Like, what are you doing coming in and spying on my property? So I went down the rabbit hole of looking at the law. And uh, what I found out is there's not really, there's no federal limits on flying over other people's property and filming. Um, the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, they administer or they regulate the skies, I think above 400 feet. But there's not a federal law that says you can't fly over property. Now there are some state laws in regards to flying over property. Um, and I looked up North Carolina law and I found it kind of interesting. Okay, so North Carolina law does not prohibit flying over other people's property. So if someone were to fly their drone over my property, and, and I wanna ask you, how do you feel about this? If someone flies their drone 30 feet over your property and they're filming your property, how do you feel about that? So North Carolina law prohibits filming people or houses without the consent of those people or uh, the property owners. But what if they're not filming? There's some ambiguity in the law that as I read it, what if they're not filming? What if they're just looking and they haven't hit record? How would you feel about that? If someone flies right in on your property, just cruising over and looking, they're not filming. They're just looking at you. North Carolina law, you know, just <laughs> kind of funnily prohibits putting weapons or arms on a drone. It also prohibits, interestingly, and applicable to this situation, it prohibits retrieving a drone from private property without the landowner's permission. So there may have actually been a law broken here. So something in me is bothered by this. Okay, so there's land rights. You, you have this, we in the United States, we respect this right of an individual to own and regulate their property. But you actually don't have any right to the air just above your property. So if someone wants to fly a drone over your property, 10 feet above your property, in North Carolina, as far as I can tell, that's totally legal. As long as they're not filming you or filming your residence. And my gut, what does my gut say? My gut says that's a bunch of cow poo. Okay, so I'd love for you to leave a comment. Tell me what you think. How would you feel about someone flying a drone over your property, say 20 feet off the ground? Additionally, have you experienced someone flying a drone over your property? You look up in the sky, you hear that little buzz, and you see a drone flying over your land. And how did that make you feel? I'm curious. You know, I have two perspectives on this because on one hand, we are, ironically, we're on YouTube, we're private people and we treasure the privacy that we have on our land. And on the other hand, I'm a YouTuber and I love to film things and I love filming. I film in public, I film in private. I love filming people, and I, while I don't have a drone, I would love to have a drone and cruise around here and look at the, you know, the surrounding land from the sky. So I kind of feel like I can see both sides. When I'm thinking as a landowner, I'm thinking, you shouldn't be flying your drone over my property. But when I'm thinking as a YouTuber or, uh, you know, amateur videographer, it's the coolest thing in the world to be able to fly a drone around and film everything from above, it's incredibly beautiful. Now here's something interesting. 
I've seen a drone above our property, probably four times, flying high, never 30 feet high, probably two to 300 feet high. And every time I've seen that, it, it kind of disturbs me. Someone's up there potentially filming us in 4K, extreme detail, seeing every detail of what's here. And I've never agreed with this view that if you have nothing to hide, you know, you should just throw your doors open. If you have nothing to hide, like show everything. I believe in a right to privacy. I mean, that's why in this country, in the United States, we have a right to privacy, actually even against law enforcement, unless they can reasonably explain why they think something illegal is going on. They have a reasonable suspicion that something's legal, legal is going on and it's approved by a judge. They can't just come onto your property and look around. Hey guys, quick heads up, three opportunities for cool Christmas presents. Links in the description below. Number one is this beautiful macrame placemats. These are sold in sets of four. They're on Amazon. My brothers and I have worked for months to find someone to make these out of good in a you know a, a high quality macrame, and they turn out beautiful. Number two, and then number three, we have a bunch of cool t-shirts and we have a new one, a home sweet homestead t-shirt available only until Christmas. Check them out and on the t-shirts with standard shipping in the continental United States, you have until December 9th to order. With expedited shipping, you have a couple more days. Okay, let's take this kind of to a different place, okay? You know, over and over in the last 150 years, technology has outstripped the law. And what I mean is new technologies have come along and the laws haven't ever, you know, taken this new technology into account. For example, imagine the traffic laws that apply to horse transportation versus automobiles that can get up to 100 miles per hour. Just one example. I, I have a feeling that there actually weren't laws against driving a carriage while impaired just because horses are a limiting factor. Horses aren't gonna run headlong into anything and destroy it, whereas automobiles are completely at the command of an impaired driver. So here's my question for discussion in the comments. I know there's been several of these, but do you think that if it's legal to fly a drone 20 feet over your property, do you think that the technology has passed the laws and that we actually need new laws to protect the privacy of landowners? Think about it for a second, okay? 20 years ago, if someone was filming a movie or a commercial and they wanted to get some incredible, smooth aerial footage, what would they have to do? They'd have to hire a helicopter. That's hundreds of dollars per hour, if not more. But now you can actually just buy a drone for a thousand dollars. It's not cheap, but in comparison it's cheap and you can film as much perfectly smooth 4K footage wherever you want, anytime. And for the first time, I mean, it's within reach of many of us to buy a drone and cruise over our neighbor's properties and look at them I mean, you could fly a drone right up to someone's house and look in their window. And there's actually examples of this in the news, people like spying on other people. You can hover your drone outside someone's window and look into their house. Now, in North Carolina, apparently, if you're filming, that's breaking the law, but still, the technology has opened up these possibilities for invading people's privacy. So the question is, what do you think? Do you think that it's reasonable that someone can just freely fly their drone over your property or do you think there should be some limitation in the law? Or, <laughs> I mean, a simple law would just be if someone's flying a drone over your property and you can't use a rifle, you can use a shotgun, it could be perhaps in like the um, wildlife hunting regulations and you're able to shoot it, you can get a tag and you can go shoot down one or two drones 
per year with a shotgun. So that would give about a mm, 75 yard, a 75 to a max 100 yard buffer above anyone's property. And that would let drone pilots just know that, hey, I need to steer clear. If my drone gets shot down with a shotgun, it's fair play. The drones give you the ability to do, you know, stuff that you couldn't otherwise do because you can get a view of someone's property that um, otherwise you would have to walk on to their property and trespass, which in the United States is very well defined in the laws as at the discretion of the landowner, whether people can come onto their property. Looking at it from the drone pilot's perspective, I, I just want to pause for a second. I don't think that it's reasonable for individuals to own the skies above their property. I think it makes sense that they're basically public domain. If you have a plane and you want to travel, it's really the best way to travel if you have hundreds of miles to go or thousands of miles to go, you should be able to fly through the skies. Now, please don't bite me. Um, you're just a funny... So this steer, he has basically an oral fixation because he was, he was bottle fed. And bleh, if you've never been licked by a steer, you've probably been licked by a cat at least once in your life. It's like being licked by a by an 800 pound cat. Imagine the tongue that's stronger, you know, as strong as your hand or your arm hitting your face and just it's like extreme sandpaper. So it's all very friendly. He's a good little steer. But um, because he was bottle fed, he's always thinking that he can get something from you or come and lick you. He was always, he's always eating dirt and chewing on wood. It's just a weird thing and I believe it's just from being bottle fed. I may be wrong. So I mean look at him right here. He's like sucking on my hand. Ah. <laughs> you can't suck on that. It's kind of sad because he's like he's gonna be our meat for the next year and he's so friendly. Okay let's stop for a minute. Everything that I said previous to this is what was running through my head this morning. Someone's flying over our property. I don't think they're out you know, just looking at us, that, that would be on paranoia. I'm not paranoid, but someone was flying over our property with a drone. But then I stopped and I thought about it and I said, how else could that drone prop have gotten on our property? And I thought about when was there a drone on our property? And I remembered back about four years ago, a friend, YouTuber friend, Justin Rhodes came out. I think it was the day they gave us chickens. It was right after we started our YouTube channel. And I was thinking, and I, I was thinking, did he lose a prop? Did he crash his drone that day? Because if he did, it could have been covered by thick grass and the grass is eaten down as much as it's ever been now, which could have exposed it. But the prop doesn't look like it's been out for four years, but plastics are really stable. So maybe, maybe it has. So I'm just gonna look. Something in my memory is jogged. So let's see. YouTube channel, Justin Rhodes. No, I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel. Art and Bree. And I'm gonna go back to right when we started our blog. It was like our first month because he promoted us then for the first time. It kicked off our channel. And I'm gonna go to oldest video. I'm gonna work from there. It should be about 30 videos in. All kinds of memories being triggered. I think I found his video from that day. Okay, look, here's winter, December 23, 2016. Can't All right, here we go. On the Great American Farm Tour. So why not give them away for Christmas? Drone footage of our property. There it is, drone footage. I think this might be the vlog. All right, here we go. I'm gonna scan through the video. I'm gonna text him and see if he remembers losing a prop. Hey, when you filmed with your drone at our property four years ago, do you remember crashing your drone? Question mark. I found a prop in our field and I'm trying to figure out where it came from. Question mark. Okay. Message sent, let's see what he says. I just have this vague memory 
It's a really vague memory that he crashed his drone. I'm questioning whether that actually happened though. Okay, so a couple hours later, Justin got back to me. I think he has a pretty good memory. And between his memory and mine, I don't think he lost a rotor on our property, which means I think my first instinct was correct. Uh, he said he did not remember crashing his drone that day. He does not think he lost a rotor out there. I'm pretty sure he'd remember. So, what does that mean? I mean, on one hand, it's not a big deal. On the other hand, it feels like a little invasion of privacy. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, goodbye.